Blood at the Root makes a difference by starting conversation, a conversation about race, about gender, about class, challenging people to think differently. You notice how it's always been the same kind of people sitting under that tree? Never nobody different? I never really paid attention. Ain't never seen nobody like me sitting under that tree. Ain't never been nobody like me run for class president. You ever look up one day and realize you've been doing the same thing for so long and you ain't even sure why? Like you're just following rules and they never stop to question why it's even a rule in the first place. I don't know, maybe. Today feel like a different kind of day, don't it? Different how? New rules kind of different. What you talking? I'm gonna give you some shade. What for? Don't go over there. Ain't nothing but a bunch of snobs and clicks sitting under that tree. And today, me too. Cool, thank you. The Graduate Acting Program commissions a play for the third year class. And Steve Rodnack, the head of our program, met Dominique Morceau, our playwright in New York, and asked her if she would be interested in being the commissioned playwright for our class. Yeah. Okay, sure then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was taken aback about the six young black male students in Louisiana, in Gina, Louisiana, who were being tried as adults for attempted murder of a young white male student at their uh, high school, at Gina High. And what had precipitated that event had been a series of racial things that had been going on in um, Gina, Louisiana, that, have, that were called not racial. And that, that was disturbing to me. So when Penn State said they had six graduate acting students, I said, well, the Gina Six. So she came in and started to work with us in a series of workshops that we didn't know where they were gonna go or what, was, what the point of any of it was. But what she was really doing was learning who we were as people. So I just want you to know, I want you to know, and, and this is not to patronize you or you know, um, condescend to you. This is, this is what's happening. You know, and I want you to be flexible on the process of working on new work is this, it is this. And so I welcome you to this. I know that you will do everything that you can and are capable of, and it will be lovely and brilliant, and then you will do more tomorrow. I think it's time to revisit that train. That's what I'm talking about. Revisit it for what? For defiance. Defiance. You'll start a rally. A demonstration. Right. Who, for oh, what? Why we ain't gotta do anything else? You already sat under it and made your point. Now we just gotta let them fools get in trouble by themselves. It ain't about trouble. It's about principle. About who belong where. About who got the freedom to be somewhere and who don't. I ain't trying to back down from no noose hanging. Racist ass noose hanging. Maybe it wasn't racist. We're actually not comfortable as a society talking about race. We, we really try to call this a post-racial America. Um, and that, it has translated into America that doesn't even acknowledge race, you know, but has racism very prevalent throughout it. And that's dangerous. Black kids protesting, white kids pranking. Whose side I'm supposed to be on when ain't none of them ever, you know, when don't none of them ever really, when it seemed like I belonged to myself. And that's it. That's the side I'm on. But here at Cedar High, everybody wants you on a side, want to see where your loyalties lie. What do I say? Who's been loyal to me? A lot of Justin is me. You find me one person. Being called an Oreo or being s said that I'm not, um, that I'm not black enough or, you know, I'm African American male. I'm, <laughs> you know, 100%. And because of the way I dress or the way that I talk or, you know, the, the music that I like or um, I'm automatic, I automatically don't fit into that. Um, spectrum or, or that stereotype of a black male. So no matter you right, so no matter you true, black face male body ain't gonna listen to you. So no matter you're hurting, no matter your pain, black face male body is always to blame. It's the rules, it's the rules, ain't remember the rules. Everybody gonna fight, only you do the time. It's the rules, it's the rules, ain't remember the rules. Black face male body. Gave me 
I remember in workshops talking about my mom and my little brother and how important they really are to me. And that's, that's the biggest thing I take from myself uh, into DeAndre is that, that need to do better for his family. You know, that he may act tough and, and mess around, but at the end of the day, the reason why he's going through all of these things for the football and for, you know, is to get his family out of the situation they're in right now and into somewhere better and somewhere, you know, where they don't have to worry about the small well, things anymore. He collapse in on him and he can't stop, but I can go pro, buy my mama a new house, get drafted straight out of here. Move my family out of this hood so we don't gotta think on this no more. Won't even have to go to no college. I'm on the fast track to something better, so why would I wanna? Yo, I wouldn't mess this up, you hurt? Not, Not for nobody, you hurt? Like I say, they came after me. I ain't started nothing. I was provoked. I ain't started nothing. And that's the truth. I think we all know what it feels like to be on the outside. Even if it's just temporary. We know what it's like to be ostracized. And I think we know it especially well within our own community. See, if I was a, a faggot, that I ought to be looking like some kind of sissy or being soft, like they know what to do with that, makes sense to them. But being on the football team, playing just as hard as the other fellas, harder even, that don't add up in none of their math. That make them real nervous. If someone seem normal like me can be this way, there'd only be a real thin line between them and me, and don't nobody like that, not nobody. Well, I ain't treated you that way. I ain't know you was that way. Ain't that what you say? I ain't made nothing bad. You see every character's point of view. You, you really understand where each character is coming from, and that is, it, that's moving for people. Say, so we come from people who believe freedom don't happen by itself. Ain't just for one group. Can't be free if everybody else around you is chained. Say, so if we don't know how to connect to a struggle besides our own, we all screwed. After I collaborated with them, I sort of built them a play and sent it to them. And then they finished doing all the rest of the stuff themselves. And I was, you know, I was in New York and they were in Penn State. Uh, so by the time that I saw what they had come up with, they, they were already performing in front of audiences in South Africa. Yeah. I was just surprised by uh, the structure that they found, the, the soul that they found. They added their own rhythms and sounds and dance. Having a hip hop theater influence, I wanted to do something with dance, with spoken word, with movement, and all of those elements. And I said, I kind of want to do something different. And they just kind of created a world out of literally blank text and poetry. So we all are responsible for what the end product end up being. We toured the show to South Africa, and we all kind of felt changed after that experience. So after having workshopped the play, rehearsed it, took it on a three-week tour, when we got back to the States, everyone felt this sense of something's different. We just felt sad that this was gonna be over until for months and months and months. It felt like, wait a minute, that was, that was too good and too real. This needs to keep going. And so we just kind of pooled our talents and created this company. And 
they have done a fabulous job at creating this entity that's, I mean, it's gotten us around the world, raising thousands of dollars. One, two, three, pass Please welcome the recipient of the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival Hip Hop Theater Creator Award, Blood at the Root. About 40 years ago, Martin Luther had a dream, huh? Dream, huh? And damn sure ain't the same dream we dream, huh? I guess they You believe all that happened yesterday? About that tree. Policemen come up and tell us to get out of there like we was criminals or something. I saw it. It was like 10 of y'all. Looked like something out of civil rights or something. <laughs> Felt like it, too. Only thing missing was the dogs chasing us. You seem unnecessary, ask me. They, they ain't got to do all that. Just let folk be where they want to be. Do what they want to do. Ain't got to be all that police and DA and none of that. You come to this school at a crazy time. Mm. Or oh, maybe you're right on time. I ain't show yet. You want to know what I've been called by them? The people I'm supposed to see myself in? Justin, how am I supposed Oreo! Ice cream sandwich! Black on the outside, white on the inside. Nerd! Sell out! Loser! White boy! Justin, I Lame! Whack! Weak nigga, cause I don't like to fight. Okay, Justin. Punk! Soft! Gay nigga, also cause I don't like to fight. All right. Corny nigga! Any kind of nigga you can think of except my nigga. Never that's my nigga! Never anything welcome, and always things that keep me separate. Every year, same shit, same names, same insults, because I don't match, because I don't fit the thing in their head, or your head, or anybody else's head, or what I'm supposed to be. Well, you know what you can do, what you're supposed to. Go fuck yourself with them! I heard they got in a fight at practice the other day. I heard Coach found out one of them boys on that team was a faggot. <gasps> mm -hmm. They ain't supposed to call them that. It's racist. It ain't racist to say faggot. Well, it's something you ain't supposed to say. I heard Coach had a shutdown practice the other day to deal with. Homosexual? You ain't supposed to say that either. You ain't supposed to say homosexual? Still sound offensive. Everything's offensive now. Then the black boys... You ain't supposed to say that neither. What am I supposed to call them? African black. African American. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just call me black. So then the black boy ended up bumping into the white boy. Hey, can you still say what? What else you gonna say? Just American? We, we all Americans! What it means to me is that this collaboration with these students was acknowledged and that um, the work that they've done on this play to really make the play what it is because it's very much for them. That was amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. I'm from DC and so to be at the Kennedy Center, a place where I've only been on school trips, it was exciting to go home, be home, and perform at the Kennedy Center and have family there and family who's never seen me perform before. So that was just, that was kind of remarkable. It was a great experience. That was a great night. I always try to remind them that it doesn't get much better than what they're doing right now. No matter what level they get to, it doesn't get much better than doing something that you care about and you believe in um, and that you are creating out of on your own. It's, this is living proof of what's, what happens if you really truly believe in, your, in yourself and your dreams. And I know that's cliche, but I'm, like I said, I'm a country boy. I'm, I'm <laughs> I come from nothing, I, you know, I'm, I'm living my dream. We're hoping to keep going. New York will be the next stop. And if it's not, I will be in New York um, looking for work that does what this did for me. Yeah, it's, it, theater's different now. Today's gonna mean something different, you heard? Today can't be like no other day. Today gotta count for something. Something that went just from a, let's try some workshops, to now winning awards at the Kennedy Center, you know, traveling the world with a show that I can, I can fully stand behind and that I feel fulfilled as an artist doing. And finding it at 21 is unreal, 
and also scary because I don't know when I'm going to have an opportunity like this again. You know, it's not, it's not every day that you come across a, a project that you believe in wholeheartedly and will take you across the world.